Hello everyone, this is going to just be a quick little uh, tutorial video on how to set up the throttles with SPAD for the new Fokker F28 by Just Flight. This is a fantastic little plane, uh, but it has some idiosyncrasies that if you don't have some good hardware to uh, go with it, you may find it difficult to get along with. And so, specifically for me, I'm using a Honeycomb Bravo throttle quadrant and there are no obviously physical detents in the uh, in the physical throttle but the Fokker has a takeoff uh, or a, a power setting detent at about 90 percent of uh, throttle movement that uh, is just a you, you hear a slight click uh, but there's nothing to really cause it to pause or stay there and so you can easily blow right through it and it's hard to get it just right unlike aircraft like the CRJ and the Airbus that have ways to set dead zones within the airplane at this time there is nothing to do that with and so you basically just have to try and hit it just right well if you have a program like SPAD SPAD.next uh, then you can actually do this yourself with a little bit of trial and error and it may be a little bit different if you're using different hardware but these settings should work if you have the Honeycomb Bravo Again, if you have something like the TCA um, Boeing throttles or the Airbus throttles or something else like Logitech, uh, again, probably can work, but your numbers are going to be different. You're just going to have to find the settings that work for you. So here's the goal. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to go into the aircraft here once I get it clicked over here. And looking at the throttles, I've got them mapped currently, and I'm going to show you what we did. So right now, when we push the throttles up, you hear them kind of click into that detent. Now you notice they stopped at that detent, and that's because I've I've have this uh, set in uh, SPAD, so that it has a dead zone when it hits that thing. Because I'm never going to be perfect and hit that round the money. So I can actually I'm actually moving my throttles a little bit back and forth right now. Oh, there it goes. I don't have to move them much, but I have it just enough to where when I hear that click, I know it's stopped and we're good. And I also aligned it to a little uh, white marker on my uh, Honeycomb Bravos so I can know that when that thing's in the center of my throttle, I know I'm in the spot. And then beyond, and the tricky part of this is it's a, there's a detent there, but the, the range of the throttle doesn't end at the detent. It needs to be able to go beyond it and firewall if you were ever needing to do that. And so uh, during normal flight operation, you really shouldn't need to go there, but if you ever had to, you need to have that thrust available. So how do we set that up so it stops? Because normally it just blows right through that. So if you're not used to using SPAD, I'm going to walk you through this step by step. If you are used to using SPAD, you can kind of skip toward the end or even just look right here and see what I've done. Uh, but uh, it's a, it's for those of us that are really, uh, really used to SPAD, it's pretty simple. But uh, even I, uh, you're still learning how to do this. So the first thing you want to do if you're new to this is you want to make sure your hardware is set and you want to click on your throttle one. This is the one you want to map first and then you're just basically going to duplicate this over to throttle two. Um, right now I have my throttles one and two set on my uh, my third and fourth axes so they're right in the middle of my Bravo throttle. My very first axis is my speed brake, my last axis is my flap lever, and uh, the other two on the sides are nothing. They're just unmapped and they're not used for this particular airplane. So throttle one, I've already got my stuff here, but if you're new to this, and this will help you if you're trying to figure out how to do this you know, for any other aircraft too, you want to try and figure out what... Um, uh, what is going to move the throttle because not everything is going to. Uh, I'm going to go over here to this uh, other axis that's not mapped currently so we can start kind of from scratch and I'm going to shrink this down a little bit so we can kind of see here what's going on. So when we click on this if we were going to hit add event you first have two really two options you can do a number of things but the, the main two you're always going to look at is standard axis and custom axis. If we were to do standard axis, this is going to be kind of just the standard Microsoft axes that are that are available through the sim, and we could say it's a throttle. Uh, in our case, you're almost always going to want to use throttle without reverser. Uh, now this airplane doesn't have a reverser, so that's not an issue. Even with a plane that has a reverser, what it's referring to here is that it ha doesn't have a reverser on the axis itself. So if you want to have it to where when you get to the last 20% of your axis, it goes into reverse mode. <clears throat> fine use it with the throttle with a reverser but otherwise you probably want to use this and have the reverser mapped to a separate switch to activate so we're going to go to throttle without reverser pick engine one and leave everything else the same just hit ok and uh, then we can come over here and uh, try our throttle and I see I'm moving it here 
you can see that bar moving, but the throttle's not moving the sim. So that axis does not work. That's that's not gonna that's not gonna fly. So we're gonna delete that axis. So what we're gonna need to do is go to custom axis. And a lot of third party planes you might have to do this with, but some some you can get away with the other one. This is always better because you, you generally have more options with this. So we're gonna go to target and browse, and it's gonna give us a whole list of stuff. And uh, this can be overwhelming. But uh, what we're gonna look for is the uh, the SimConnect standard axis, which I think it's gonna be under S here, if I recall correctly. I'm doing this a little bit on the fly. So SimConnect. It might not. Oh, it's a SimConnect over here. So it's gonna be under throttle. That's what it is. T. And you can also do searching. I find searching sometimes limits your options, and then it's hard to back out without closing it again. So <clears throat> I'm a scroller. Okay. So we have a couple different options here. We have a uh, throttle axis set EX1. There is also going to be a throttle, <coughs> let's see, throttle axis EX1, and then throttle set, there should be a throttle one set. There's throttle one set. So you really have like three potential options here <coughs> for your uh, throttles. And so you have to experiment with which one it is. In this case, I do believe it's throttle one set. So we're going to hit OK, and I'm going to leave, I'm going to put use axis value, because I want to use the value of the axis, and we're going to do uh, raw rescaled <coughs> right there. Uh, actually, I'm just going to leave that off for the moment and just hit OK, and we'll see what that does. OK, so it's moving the throttle, but you can see it's also not moving in its full range. I'm, it's backwards, because that's full throttle, that's, <laughs> that's a fully closed, so there's some, some issues with it, to be sure. So let's go ahead and edit that event. We'll uh, turn on the uh, the rescaled here, first of all. And I'm just going to do it at rescaled and hit OK and see if that makes any changes, because sometimes that has an effect. So now we're in the right direction, but we have hardly any range of movement. So we have a whole new problem. <clears throat> so we're going to go, and if we look at this running up, this says 0 to 1023, and that's all that's moving right there. It's using the raw axis. Now, I know from experience that the full range of motion on with the Bravo anyway is usually negative 16383 to positive 16383. That's why it's only moving a little bit. So if we go to rescale value and we say we want to go from negative 16383 to 16383 and hit OK. Now suddenly, hey, full range of motion. Look at that. Boom. Done. But you hear it click and just breeze through that detent, and there's nothing to stop it. So that's what we want to we want to stop. Now, the key here to figuring this out was going over here to the extra tab and running the LVARs, and this is going to help us to find buttons and switches and all the things that we can map. But it also will show us the values of axes and things that we're on that the sim is looking for, and this is the key to doing this. So. What you want to do is go to last change here, and sometimes you'll have stuff that's making noise in the aircraft that you don't care about. So gauges, tanks, temperatures, and you can eliminate these real quick by clicking on this little guy right here, and it will basically silence these until you redo the LVARs again. So I'm just going to do that real fast. And there's some flow things here I'm just going to get rid of just to make sure they're not messing with me. So now I'm going to move the throttle through its range of motion and hit this last change twice. And you can see up here, engine one throttle target, engine one throttle lever, and there's a value right here. Now we're at zero. Watch that value. As we move the throttle, you see they go up. So the value is basically a zero to 100%, if you think about it in a percentage term. That's what the, uh, the aircraft's looking for. Now, the key was to run the throttle until I hear the click. right there. So it clicked right about 90 and and I had to kind of do this a couple times to make sure it wasn't just a delay or anything like that. It'll actually click, I think it was anywhere between 89.5 and 90.5 or, or something like that. So it's right in there, it's basically 90% but it had a little bit of an error either way. So that was the key to go, okay, it's 90% of the throw, that's where we need that to be. Now if we go over here to our throttle setting, whoops, and we click on this guy and we say edit. 
Look at this. 923. Right around there is the magic location. Of course, that doesn't really tell us anything because our true scale is this. And so this is where I had to do a little bit of, of uh, trial and error. But what we want to do basically is rescale this so it, we stop at the detent. And what I discovered was it was about 13, let's see, I think it was 13, 125. I think, oops, that's 7. 13, 125, I think was the magic number. So I'm going to hit OK on that. Right there. And so it stops. The throttle doesn't go all the way. It stops right at 90. 90.05. 90 That's about as close as I could get it. So 13, 125 was the range. Now, this is good, but now our throttle doesn't go any, any higher than the detent. So obviously this isn't good enough. <laughs> we got to go past that. So here's where we start to get into some jujitsu jiu jujitsu of SPAD. So we're going to go to edit this. So we have two things here. We can rescale the value, which is rescaling how this particular axis, its definition goes. So in this case, we've told it you're going to stop at 13,125. But right now, because I've rescaled it, it's going to stop at 13,125 only when my, my physical throttle reaches firewall status, which means there's no way I can ever go beyond that. You can see here, I'm at full extension. And that's when it hits that, that, that click, is right there at full extension. So that's not going to work in and, of, in and of itself. We need a way to tell it, yeah, I only want you to go that far, but I want you to do it at a smaller range on the physical axis. That's where the range definition comes in. And this is where it can get a little confusing because the range definition is going off of this number here, this 1023. And so what we're going to tell it, we're going to say, yes, we're going to rescale this from zero. But and again, this, is, this took some trial and error, but I want to do it to 800 instead of 1023. And we're going to say, OK. Now watch what happens. You're going to watch this and watch when we hit the detent. Right there. So we hit the detent, and look at that. We're not to our full extension on our throttle yet. So, but now I can't go any further because remember we defined it as it's only going to do that. So this, again, doesn't quite get us there, but it's, it's gotten us in the right direction. So it only does that. So that's great. The next step is to duplicate this. So we're going to go to, and in fact, the window is too small now. We're going to say copy this event, and we're going to paste it in here. So we have two of them now. And we're going to go into the second one, and we're going to change the definition. So I want to make sure there is a nice buffer between when it hits that 800, between when it hits that tent, so it doesn't just go immediately. So I'm going to change this from 900, so I have 100 units, I don't know what you want to call these things, to 1023. That's our new range for the upper scale of this. So the second value is going to only take this. And that scale needs to start from 13,126 to 16,383. Now what I discovered is if I set to 16, 13,684, it, I mean 16384, it actually goes and will give me 100% on the throttle. It was always like 99.99 something, da da da. So if you add the scale to one, it allows it to not have any wiggle room and know for sure it's going to go to the full set. So even though technically the range is 383, 384 worked just slightly better. So we got that set, we got that set, we're going to say OK. So now we have two ranges for this. So now watch this. I'm going to move this off to the side. Again, we're watching this to see when the detent happens. There's the click. Now I can move it a little bit and the throttles won't move because this is that period between the 800 and the 900 where nothing happens. So we move it, move it, move it, and then suddenly it moves to firewall. And now we're full. And there's again, there's not a lot of movement here, but that's really, I mean, it's 90% of the throttle travel, so there's not going to be much for that 10%. So that is how you can set your throttles to easily hit the detent and you can have a little bit of wiggle room to move it around and not lose your detent and then move on to full firewall if you need to. So SPAD is a fantastic program. It can be super complex because you got to figure out kind of what all that means. But once you figure it out, you really have the ability to do some really cool things. 
I was able to write a script for having these uh, start switches, which have to go into start and then eventually go into the open position after you reach over 50% of the uh, high pressure spool. And so my switch is only a two position switch. So I was able to write a script to say, yeah, when I hit the switch, put it to start. But then if that switch is in the on position and the engine spools up beyond 50, shove it up into the open position. So I don't have to hit the switch again. It just suddenly goes when it gets to that point. That's the kind of stuff you can do with this program, SPAD.next. It is really cool. It's, I think, about 25 bucks or so for the, uh, the license that allows you to use it with Microsoft. There's a $90 version that allows you to use it with a whole bunch of different programs. If you're only going to use it with Microsoft, don't get the $90 version. There's no reason to spend that money. Uh, but if you're only going to use it for Microsoft, the Microsoft it'll do Microsoft and X-Plane, I believe, with that one license. It doesn't need a separate one for that. So, um, But it's very powerful. It will cause you to kind of get lost in your head sometimes, and it's very overwhelming the first time you use it. There are videos on YouTube to help. This hopefully will help a little bit to understand some of the madness. But uh, it allows you to really do some cool things that you can't do with the basic Microsoft Flight Simulator controls menu and really make these planes a joy to fly. So I've got the throttles mapped correctly. I have these switches down here, which are hard to reach, uh, mapped to a switch on my, uh, on my Bravo. I've got the silencer horn mapped, so that way every time I pull the throttles back and the thing goes ee, I can just silence it real fast without having to try and find the button here. Like I said, I mapped these guys. Um, I mapped, I was able to map the dome light switch, which is really stupid, hard to find. It's this little guy right here, which I don't have any power on the plane right now, so it's not going to turn on. But uh, I have that mapped, so that's easier to get to, and things like that. Just quality of life stuff. And for those of you that I think uh, they talked about in, uh, uh, in uh, like, P3D at least could do this, and I think X-Plane can do this, where you can go outside and click on doors to open them, well... We can't do that in Microsoft Flight Simulator, at least not yet. But, thanks to SPAD, I can. <laughs> so, you just have a lot of options to be able to do things. And so, I highly recommend you look into SPAD Doc next. If you have any questions, put them in the comments below. Uh, even better, join my Discord. Link's in the description below. And uh, hopefully we can get you the help you need with SPAD and, uh, and, with, uh, and flying these planes. So I hope this was helpful. I hope this will help make some more uh, pilots of the F-28, which is a fun old school airplane. But if you're a child of the magenta line, you, you, got, uh, you got your work cut out for you. So I would encourage you to look into this aircraft. It's a lot of fun. I think it's 70 bucks, but it's worth it. It's such a cool aircraft. Until next time.